Like that single soggy sock you find remaining at the end of every single wash that you kind of just discard out because you can't find a match for it, uh, Lady Luna Freya has been thrown to the wind. Of course I'm talking about the latest update, Terra Battle Final Fantasy XV. We've all seen the comment section, it looks something like this. Oh. <laughs> ah. It's all anyone's talking about, so I thought I'd chip my piece in that uh, Sarah in that brief, barely even a half an hour segment showed more relationship and connection qualities with Noctus than Luna ever showed throughout the entire compilation of the universe. And it, it does hurt me to say, but it is kind of true. I mean, it is and it isn't. Uh, first, I'm going to start with I've gone through and I've calculated to try to get the argument out of the way whether or not Sarah had more stage time with Noctus. And the way I've decided to measure this is to count every single piece of dialogue exchanged between Loct Loctus and Luna. Noctus and Luna. <laughs> Noctus and Luna and Sarah and Noctus. Uh, I've counted every single one. I'm not including single pieces of dialogue or combat dialogue. Actual sentences, you know, a single line of dialogue. And I did it. Why? Because I have nothing better to do with my time. <laughs> so here we go. Straight off the bat, Sarah had 50, and this is what she said to Noctus, 51 lines of dialogue. 51. Now let's switch over to Luna, and this is where it gets a little bit more difficult. Um, well, 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 first of all, I'm going to say that there's 25. 25 in total. And I mean in total. I've counted the Brotherhood anime. I've counted the little flashback scenes. Uh, I've counted even some of the Royal Edition content in which Luna made an appearance. So even across all of that compilation, she's still halfway to Sarah in terms of lines of dialogue but you know it's not just about the lines you know, it doesn't matter how much they speak the content of those words is what matter so, so let's get into that well first of all i'm gonna have to dissect luna's and it really pays me to say this i'm gonna have to dissect hers in half because 13 no 12 sorry 12 of those lines 12 of the 25 she was a child she was chubbed in the anime, in the flashback scenes, even in the final farewell, they decided to make Noctis and Luna children for half of those lines as well. And I'm not going to say that doesn't count, but I've got to say that it doesn't, it doesn't exactly go much of a way into building the shipping field. No one's really going to be getting ship vibes from the kids. I'm not, not, not to say that it's, it's not a great foundation. And I think this is the thing with Square Enix is you had the foundation for this couple. You built it. You just didn't execute it. Because if I just go to the original game, just the original game of 15, which I think should be the thing really that counts. You know, not everyone should be expected to watch all of this extended universe stuff. And that's completely fair comment to make. So when we get into just the game itself, 13. Only 13 lines of dialogue. Again, some of them she's as she's as a kid. And the other amount she's dead. Dead, round bread. In fact, 15 of the 25 pieces of dialogue in total that I'm talking about, 15 of them is Luna speaking to Noctus in the afterlife. Now, again, not to say that doesn't count, but it does beg a little too late kind of question. And this is the thing, little too late. Is it too late? for Square Enix to redeem Noctis and Luna's relationship. Of course, we have that Luna Freya DLC, but with the description of that saying it's about Luna uh, overturning the fate of the Destiny dealt to the Lucian King, uh, we don't even know that she's going to be seeing Noctis. I hope for the love of God they do. And again, with Noctis's, uh, his final strike, or well, I think they've changed now, the alternate grand finale. Again, I hope they get some scenes there. But cutting all of that out, in terms of actual original game, how many lines of dialogue did Noctis and Luna have while she was alive? One. One. And he was fucking unconscious for crow. Okay, this looks pretty bad. It looks pretty bad, and it is pretty bad. Um, but. Oh, well, actually, no, before I get into that, before I get into the good side, before I see my, my positive spin on this, I'm also going to say of those 25, and it is actually 25 to 28, if you include, and this is the difficult bit, some of the times when she's speaking, she's actually incanting, like, kind of oracle uh, uh, powers. 
Uh, if you include the 25 to 28, most, and I'm going to say most, and this is why I think so many people are coming out saying that Sarah is such a better uh, vibe for Noctus. Why are there so many people making these comments and feeling like, oh my god, Sarah was better than Luna has ever been, is because of most of those lines, Luna is only speaking to Noctus in an oracle sense. Most of the time she's talking about the stars, about their duty, about his role as a king. The stars shine for you now. The fate of our star rests with you now. Even as children, even as children, we don't even get them just talking as kids and engaging. Most of the time it's Luna telling Noctus what her duty is and what his is. King of Light is the calling of a crystal. The king, anointed by the crystal, can purge our star of its scourge. That's all of that out of the way, so it is pretty overwhelming. And, you know, with, with this one terror battle, and this is what's so frustrating, Square Enix, in that single update DLC, you should have done exactly that for Luna. One scene in which, in a very short amount of time, in a very short period, date, whatever you want to call it, you round their relationship. And this is so frustrating because it just shows how easy it would have been for Square Enix to have given us the Noctus and Luna feels, to have made the ending, the wedding scene, the death, all that more palpable, potent and profound. Because in that brief time that Noctus and Sarah are together in this update, uh, they pretty much go through their character development. They speed through it, but they do it in such a way that it works. So they meet, they talk about their personalities, they even make each other laugh, they talk about how they make a great team. They even at one point in this DLC have a spat, they have a falling out, then they kind of make up from it. They joke together, they encourage together, they make each other laugh and smile, which is, I agree, so much more than we ever saw Luna and Noctus do, because most of these lines, if they weren't about duty and Lucian kings and rings, well, well then it was all just very much tinged with sadness and tragedy, and I know that that is a sort of the, the point of Nox and Luna is they're a tragic couple. And this is where I'm going to put my positive spin and why I, even despite all of this and how bad this seems, <laughs> why I know people are making these comments is I, I still believe in the relationship of Nox and Luna. And I did a video on this before. Were Nox and Luna the worst Final Fantasy couple or the deepest? And in this video I spoke about, it, and this is how I see it, but I, I don't ever expect every gamer to have to uh, buy into this kind of deep way of thinking. I, I feel like they could be the deepest couple because their relationship transcended any need for verbal or physical validation. AK, this is a couple who, from the day they met, they knew that their paths were intrinsically linked. They knew that, you know, despite being separated by time and distance, and some people might have had this kind of relationship themselves, you just know that they would be a valid companion who you could follow through life. Uh, they're, they're connecting on a soul, on, on a spirit level. So I can, I can kind of buy into all of that. That's a self-drawn conclusion. That's not something the game itself has offered up in a clear way. So I'm not going to use that as a defense here, but that's why I personally, because that's how I see it. I still really love and adore Noctus and Luna as, as, as a couple. And the thing is that I'm just talking about lines of dialogue. We can't overlook the fact that they did spend pretty much a very long childhood together. Noctus was in Tenebrae, he was healing. So again, behind the scenes, there's a whole load of stuff happening. We also have to take into account that there, there's the communication, they've been speaking and being pen pals through dog mail. <laughs> through dog mail for many many years uh since since they were children uh, until the present day and even throughout the game and that's the other frustrating thing it's still behind the scenes and that didn't even have to be you could have showed us what was in the book i mean they showed us very briefly i think in the anime they show prompt uh, pictures of promptus and nocto Prompter, Noctu, Prompter. I'm such a fucking idiot. I really am. <laughs> Not the Prompto. Um, I also think there was also a little thing with uh, a Tenebrae flower. But you could have shown us what they were actually communicating. Even if it was just a few letters in like a data log. Noctus and Luna's book. You know, in FF8, for example, we had Selfie's diary. I'm thinking that kind of thing for the book. Even that would have been a little bit of something extra for us to have gone on. Because now here we are. Two years after the game, an update DLC in which Noctus is meeting a random outer franchise chick for barely even half an hour, and already it's it's basically done exactly what should have been done with Luna, exactly what the fans wanted with Luna, exactly what they needed to buy into this relationship. So let this be a lesson to you, Square Enix, that the imagination 
of, of gamers can only go so far. I've been saying this, I've been saying this from day one, there needed to be a date scene. I said that the perfect time would have been during the speech when Nox and Luna kind of bob to each other. That's the thing, there's a lot of unspoken dialogue between these two. Like on the train scene when she's a ghost and whatnot. No, even the wedding scene, not a single piece of bloody dialogue there either. There, there are a lot of intimate moments and a lot of intimate backstory, but it just needed to be validated. There needed to be a date scene. It would have been amazing if they'd have used Umbra's time traveling powers or Noctis had used it to take a splice out of time, space and time, for Noctis and Luna to have basically have done exactly what would have happened in this Terra Battle DLC, for them to have maybe had an argument, spat or difficulty of some kind. So we can see how that couple overcomes that, to see them have a joke, a laugh, to see them acknowledge the, 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 the profundity even profundity of their relationship. You know, throughout this DLC, Sarah Knox says, well, we work great as a team. We're a great team. You're not bad yourself. I'm going to miss you. And then the clangor at the end, even Sarah saying, be more open with your feelings. They even then connected on an emotional level. Basically, it touched base on basically every single dynamic that would make a great male-female relationship and or romance. And that's exactly why people got the shipping feels because you touched on those dynamics. I don't think Square Enix intentionally were trying to make Sarah a love interest for Noctis, but that's exactly how it came across because those dynamics were touched upon. And you had so many chances throughout this universe in either ghost lunar form, kid lunar form, or any kind of bloody form, time traveling form, whatever it may be, you had plenty of opportunity to hit the same check marks and more, but you left too much in obscurity and you just didn't give them enough time together. Luna had more lines with Hillary fucking Clinton than she did with Noctis. <laughs> so there we go. Am I going to have a fool's hope that the Luna Freya and DLC in 2019 and all the grand finale can give us some of that. A false hope is better than no hope. So I'm going to hold out. I hope you, uh, I hope this update more than anything, if, if, because there's no possible way that Square Enix aren't going to see this overwhelming amount of comments. It's almost every single comment. Every top like comment is this. If they don't read this and realize that in that 2019 content, they need to bang home the shipping fields, well then, well then this hobo head poison uh, ain't going to be coming to your defense anymore. But <laughs> it was still a fantastic DLC. So it was a great chick. It was really nice seeing those other sides of Noctis that we don't really Really get to see because he's been in such a male dominant game and all of his relationships are so male dominant and, and uh, I even felt myself squeeing up even just the little things but when Noctus knelt down to to tide Podiger uh, Sarah's outfit even that was just a little demonstration of Noctus's more gentle and nurturing side and we should have seen that. But anyway, I'm going to keep rambling about this all day if I do not sign out. So until the next video, let me know what you think of the comment section below. I bloody know you're going to anyway. <laughs> I bloody know you're going to anyway. Keep it clean. Don't be mean. This topic hurts my spleen. Until the next video. Come out. <laughs>